Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and uh, this week, Canada. How's Canada doing this week? It can't decide whether it wants to be hot or cold. Dude, right? You get, this is like one of the very interesting things, like, um, like when I have weather, you just get the extreme versions of whatever I have. A yeah. bit further down on this continent, and I noticed like is today was like abnormally cold compared to yesterday, which was warm. And the day before that, I had the AC on for the first time. Yeah, it's been it's been like it's been like fifteen degrees for like three days, and then it drops to minus three for no reason. What's going to be like two tonight? I'm like yes, I like oh, that. Man. Oh man. Uh, anyway, that's Jordan. You might know him. We do a show together. We've been doing a show together for almost ten years. Uh, Jill. Has the flu, or a flu, or a sickness, or she flew away. She possibly could have sprouted very, very wings. Yes, she, she took off. That that does happen. Uh, we're still going to do a show because I was thinking about. I was talking to Jordan last night. I'm like, hey man, you know what? I got a little bit of a show note together. Maybe we can. Uh, I was like, we well, even just skip a week. That's no big deal. But I'm like, we've joked about doing a weekly daily Wednesdays, which Jordan is the one responsible for the name of the show. Yeah. I'm I'm responsible for many terrible names of yeah. many things. And we've never had an opportunity to do it on a Thursday. Yeah. Tw- th- Wednesday? Th- Wednesday. Th- Wednesday. <laughs> Have fun, RSS feed. So, man, um, what have you been up to? I know your tax season is uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sunday, technically, but yes. Uh, gotta, gotta get stuff done. Too much procrastinating. Uh, it's, it's not a good, it's not a good West recipe for uh, success. Uh, but I should get a good return this year though. Uh, so that's going to be good. That's going directly into my mortgage. No, no more dropping returns on graphics cards. Oh that's, man. My, oh. my, 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 my youthful reckless spending is done. Now I, now One of us. One, right. <laughs> Damn you adulting. Uh. Like all I do is I take the money from over here now and I put it over here. I, I put it into the house. Yeah. And put it into the house. Smart move. Smart yeah. move. Um, I was kind of excited earlier this week. They finally, after a month, 28 days, uh, the OBS team fixed a spite nope issue with RTMP mm. on Debian. Now, I saw that that was a uh, pull request, request was done and I didn't think like, it works. And then I got committed and Yay, I can build OBS again. Very excited about that. And I was talking to you earlier, the dangers of buying braided DisplayPort cables is that they look an awful lot like braided USB cables. Right. I, yeah, I'm, lo- I'm looking at my desk right now and I got a couple braided cables. One is an audio. One is one of those audio cables you sent me. I got a type C cable. I got an HDMI cable. Yeah, they're all they're all suspiciously similar thickness, aren't they? Yeah. And um, I'm just saying it's a good thing. By the way, I got a 3060 finally. I don't know if I mentioned that last. I didn't have it last week. So, no, I didn't mention it. Well, I had it, but I didn't tell anybody. Uh, But, yeah, I was unplugging some stuff from the OBS box. And uh, that braided cable, I reached down and because my brain said, oh, braided cable, that's USB cable. (laughs) And if you want a good laugh, go look up DisplayPort cables on Amazon. Sort by reviews, one star with pictures, and you will see dozens, not three, not four, dozens of DisplayPort cables that have been physically ripped out of the mechanical lock. You know, the worst part, the the worst is too, when you press the, when they have like the little button lock, Mm -hmm. you press it and it doesn't go all the way down. So they do get stuck in there. Oh, then you got to fight with it and try to get another finger in there. And and, and if if you give it a normal yank, yeah, you're just like, oh, nope, that's not out. Dude, uh, well, fortunately, it didn't have a lock on it because I remember thinking about that when I said, like, eh, it doesn't have a lock. Does it work? It works. Don't worry about it. So good to know. Let's get right into it because there's a new version. We were talking about running Ubuntu in the yes. pre show, and you you ran it for a little bit back in the yeah, day. Yeah, right? I ran it for a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I got no I got no irrational hatred for Ubuntu. I know some people who work at Canonical. It's all good, and they got something to be happy about. It's the new release day, 2204, long-term support is out. And Firefox users, I hope you like snaps, because that's all you're getting from now on. Awesome. Uh, th- 
yeah, it also comes with an updated GNOME 4.2. A bunch of apps needed to be held, held back to the 4.1 version because of compatibility stuff. Uh, there's a new horizontally oriented workflow. GNOME is a lot more vertically oriented these days, but or I, I guess it is horizontally oriented. Man, I've it's been it's been a hot minute since I've used GNOME. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're uh, you can also look forward to uh, Wayland by default if you were uh, here on the last long term service or long term support uh, distribution. You were still on X. So that's the thing to look out for. Also, uh, 515 kernel, which uh, yeah, no no uh, no new USB audio latency stuff. That's right, a, that's a little unfortunate. I, that was the one thing that just took and like not for like boo, but like ouch. And I understand yeah. why. Yeah, you know because you know narrowly missed it. Yeah. Right, there's no like post 516 long term out yet, and I'm like, oh, that sucks. Maybe, but I mean, Canonical has this thing. Like backports or yeah, and like I I don't know how how big a lift that is to backport though to mm. be to be honest. Um, I don't know. Um, one good thing about Debian is by the time Debian twelve rolls out, I mean, they'll, they'll it'll be in there. But a couple of things with this. Um, for the fashion conscious, uh, it offers get this ten different accent colors. I don't know what an accent color is, but there's ten of them. Okay. And yeah, both dark and light variants of the Yaru theme, which I'm guessing is a gnome, gnome thing, right? I guess I guess that's like the their their Ubuntu theme. That's that's what they call it now. Yaru. Could be. Now, twenty two oh four ships with a little thing you might have heard of. They call it Rust. The kids love it. It's awesome. Mm. Everything's done in Rust these days. I think even uh, what is it? System seventy six is like we're going to build a desktop manager in Rust. Ooh. They did say they were going to do that. Uh, mm. Good luck to them. Yeah, memory safe systems level programming. Also, uh, they're going to be moving to SSL v3. That's good. WSL can upgrade out of the box to 2204 directly, which I'm guessing that was an issue previously. And it is optimized for the AWS Graviton, to which on behalf of everyone's like, yes, I would love to have one of those to play with. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, you, you, and everyone else, yeah, right. But they, they, they exist for Amazon's data center and only Amazon's like, data please, center. Please, sir, can I get a cup of graviton? And no. they're just like, why are you at our yeah, data centers you, again? You, you, you can rent me. one. You right. can rent as many as you want, then. But I, I, I want it in the room, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be near my graviton. Uh, that is a thing. So this is not a repeat from the last time and the other time. This is all brand new. Canonical hopes to IPO in 2023 for reels this time. For reels. Riggedy this time. reel. Right? This is posted up on text cr- a text crunch. <laughs> text crunch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nom, nom, nom. Good, good, good old text crunch. <laughs> uh, Shuttleworth noted he now expects to go public next year. Canonical is, he points out, not in a situation where they need to raise outside money and that going public for him is not about fundraising and say what you want about it canonical say what you want but i think they've definitely been taking their time with this setting up for an ipo crossing their t's dotting their lowercase j's doing a good job of that and that is something you do need to take care of because company culture changes when you go from that you know upstart we're doing this like oh we got to go full business we got to start yeah, making some that, money that, that- that 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 and that's a, that's a rough transition. Uh, I'm I my my job usually involves existing in that space of getting organizations from like small smaller scaled stuff to like more. Hey, we we have to support all these users now. We have all these people. We have security. Blah blah blah. So it's it's definitely going to be a cultural shift. One thing that stands out to me in this TechCrunch article, um, their their concern was that uh, they can't they can't hire enough talent. Uh, although. I don't know. Maybe maybe they should start revisiting their uh, Byzantine interview process, right? We 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 we've seen some stuff. Our our very own Pedro Mateus went through their ringer, and it wasn't very good. He verified that. Uh, what Jordan's talking about? Somebody posted that on our Linux uh, last month, month before. Yeah, you're like, I can't believe this, and I was like, this is what I was hit with when I was. I want to work at Canonical, and I think everybody looked at that and said. Man, maybe if I was starving on a street, but there's no way I would dance through that, you know. And it like right out of the gate, like, what is your favorite memory from high school? And I'm like, ask someone's age without asking their like, age. Literally, right. by the time you finished filling out the questionnaire, you could have interviewed and got another job. It it genuinely was one of those things. Like, I don't think this is authentic. Then, of course, we asked Pedro, and Pedro's like, Yeah, 
Oh but, no! Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I had, uh, I had Lonnie review some of his responses to give it the uh, the HR scrub because I wanted because I wanted him to be the right. gaming product manager for Canonical. I thought he would do a right. very good job. Um, but alas, yeah, this uh, it oh. is what it is. Hey, um, hey, we can look at this. What about this? Ubuntu twenty five oh four. We can call it stock market stork. <laughs> Is, is 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 that the next one up? the The last one was what? Oh man, I I I freaking missed it too. Uh, they they all, I always make jokes about it. It's Jammy Jellyfish. So I guess, uh oh, the the next letter is K. And I'm gonna move on to the next story about Firefox. <laughs> Firefox, um, you like Fire? You still use like Daily Driver, right? You like, yeah, uh, yeah, for the most part. Uh, I these days I'm kind of split evenly between uh, Chrome for work, Firefox, and uh, Vivaldi on personal use. Uh, but yeah, I still, I still regularly use Firefox, uh, and maybe you are one of those people who upgraded to Ubuntu 2204 jammy jellyfish. You wanted a jammy Dodger and, uh, you decided, uh, I don't want to run my Firefox in any sort of sandbox container. I just like to run it on my system. Well, lo and behold, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can enable a, uh, what, what do they call it? A PPA in, in, uh, Ubuntu land. Papa. Yeah. A pup, pup, pup. Pop and uh, yeah, get a deb file of uh, Firefox, uh, the latest Firefox, uh, put pulled down and installed on your Ubuntu system. So there you go. It's, it's nice to have. Always op- always good to have options, especially when Canonical takes them away. I am perplexed. I'm perplexed about moving the Firefox to Snaps. And this is what I do. How do you install it on? Do you get a flat pack or you just, I download it from the site and just run it? Um, Fedora ships with uh, Firefox installed by default, so I guess what, whatever whatever it comes with. I think it's the native version. I, uh, I th- yeah, I think I'm on the the RPM version of Firefox. RPM. Yeah, I installed a Flatpak last week, and I immediately uninstalled it. Nothing against Flatpaks. Uh, it was just like I needed this like one megabyte app, and it was like here's half a gig of dependencies. And yeah, you 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 do need to have that runtime ready to go. Yeah, otherwise you're going to be sitting like, there waiting. In that if you've already bought into the ecosystem, that. It's a pittance, yeah. but yeah, that first hit, watching that the first time, I'm like, I'm not burning um, that much disk space for that little app. Uh, but yeah, I just download Firefox. It was a curious decision. And I'm going to say doubly, doubly curious because as the guy mentions, there's a PPA for ESR and Thunderbird stable builds from the Mozilla team. Why is it as a snap again? I th- I th- I, th- I think like a lot of things uh, Mozilla does these days. Uh, the story starts with and so they cut us a big check, and so uh, now now we're on Snaps. Um, and I don't have any I- irrational hatred for Snaps any more than I do for Flatpak. I'm I'm still open to anybody who's willing to come on the show and sit me down and give me why I need containerized apps on the desktop. I mean, uh, 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 I I have half an hour here. But we're not gonna. Do. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, it, I, at at the end of the day, it's good. It's good to have the options, right? Um, some 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 people want their their stuff running in a containerized sandbox. Some people just want to run stuff on the system. Right now, there still is a bit of a performance hit, and uh, if and yeah, for uh, if you're if you're like me and have way too many tabs open, uh, yeah, you you may you're gonna need all that all the memory you can get. I don't know. It's kind of curious. It's a weird move. But then again, I said the same thing when the last version of Ubuntu I ran uh, in the studio was when curious things like GNOME system monitor was a snap, like and calculator. There's the huh. dude, dude with a baby or two says apparently the snap idea came from Mozilla wanting people to update. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a solid take, right? People don't upgrade up. Uh, people don't update their browsers. It's, it's a problem. Mm hmm. People are running a lot of vulnerable software out there, so I guess. Well, they kind of ran into a a similar thing uh, with Debian with Chromium, you know, Mm -hmm. because that was so far back in security patches. But yeah, but Chromium Chromium itself was just like a packaging nightmare too. It was yeah, because they Google really wanted people to like not use it and use Chrome. Oh, how don't speak ill of friendly Google. It wants to. It wants help. And love and nurture in your data. And yes. <laughs> and you it can only get that from your data. Absolutely. Hey man, speaking about Google, nomin on your data. Lineage. Mm. You might have heard of it. 
Something we were talking about a bit earlier. Do people still mess around with this? And this is what I want to bring up. Lineage 19 is ready. That's right. Android 12, baby. You get to play around with it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, a couple can of things. install it on your car. You can. <laughs> Android Auto, 100%. Not even joking. Uh, rip tables on this, man. Lots of legacy, legacy devices were nuked due to AOSP's removal of IP tables. Uh, it's using the EBB. EBPF, man. Uh, so only devices with kernel 4.19 or newer are going to have the needed capabilities to make use of that. Backporting that nonsense is going to be significant, significant. So I wouldn't hold your breath on that. Like they're actively saying, hey, if you want to help with that or you got something working, that's not like a gave a security issue. We would love to talk to you. And if you're curious, you want to check what kernel is available on your mobile right now settings about phone tap the android version i'm 414 on my galaxy s6 yes i'm very happy about that to which i ask you jordan when was the last time you installed um lineage or before that when was the first time you installed cyanogen mod oh the first time i installed cyanogen on was on my old uh, htc <clears throat> uh htc dream or okay. uh, desire or desire one it was, it was it was the one that was the non-google branded nexus mm. um but yeah, otherwise it was identical. It was like the exact same hardware. Um, last time I installed Lineage, though, was like a couple months ago because I was giving someone an old phone of mine. And I'm like, yeah, here's an up to date operating system on it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not running it on like my, my personal device. I couldn't be arsed. And apparently it's not supported at the moment anyways. So yeah, it, 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 it's a little it's a little tricky if you're looking for like a new device that has like that will have the ability for you to like install your own operating system on, especially for Android is uh, slim pickings these days. Would you buy a device uh, that had a locked bootloader? Yeah, I, 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 I guess, I guess that's really the question. It depends. It depends on where you're getting the phone from. Like these days I wouldn't, these days I just go buy unlocked phones. Right. Right. But, uh, but if you got one for free from your carrier, that was, that was actually a problem I ran into was like, I forgot Ooh. that I had a locked uh, a carrier <laughs> locked phone. Because it's like, oh, right, yeah, I never had to deal with this garbage. Um, I was just kind of thinking with that, man, because, you know, I started tinkering with Cyanogen Mod, like, way back uh, when I bought that, the original Nexus 10, that thing was half a grand, and I'm like, this is great. Google said it's going to love me for years to come. And like, seven minutes after I bought it, Google's like, what? Oh, yeah, we dropped support for that. Have fun. Like, what? It makes me, yeah, it makes me really sad, though, because, like, uh, stuff like lineage is so dependent on like the 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 kernels that uh, that like are provided. Like, yeah, you can use the the carrier pro- provided kernels with all like the firmware and whatnot. But mm-hmm. like g- generic ones don't exist. You you may be stuck with like a kernel on a device forever, and that's that sucks. That's why you got that's why you're stuck on lineage eighteen and not nineteen. I mean, I definitely have some uh, machines running some very old versions of lineage, but they don't have anything attached to them. You know, the, yeah, it's like hey, you're a thing tablet that controls that one device but you know what um like somewhere i I was just running through this like even the galaxy s6 that i have which is the newest mobile that i bought out of the box it only booted stock android that one time and that was to enable developer options so that's yes yeah you could could, uh you do the adb push yeah That, that was all it was for, and it's been running lineage ever since. I wonder how many, if you still do that, write in. Why do you do it? I just do it out of habit now, and I i mean, that informed my shopping decision. I, mean, I wanted to make sure, you know, you head over to XDA, and you're like, yeah, well, I, all right, cool, cool. There's a ROM for that. And I think I, it's I, more I, like I was, down the road, because, you know, I'm going to get the second life out of the device after it gets yeah. too old and unsupported. For for sure, I'm I'm usually hesitant when it's like, oh yeah, go to the XDA forums. Here's some media fire links. Go download these. I'm like, uh, I've 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 seldom been brave enough to do that. It's gotten better now because there's some uh, like dedicated uh, we'll check some Android file hosting. Okay, yeah, uh, like you at least be sure like uh, whatever malicious was uploaded by the author directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> exactly. It, it, it didn't get any additional malicious code injected into it in transit. Um, a lot of that's on GitHub too. Mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. All right, uh, we're going to talk about uh, shoving GPUs and Raspberry Pis in just a moment, and Jordan's going to tell you about Cooler Master's brand new cooling system for, you might have guessed it, Raspberry Pi. But before we do that, I want to thank everybody who supports the show, patreon.com forward slash Linux Teamcast, everybody who subs on Twitch, 
everyone who just shares our nonsense, man, over the years, it's kind of fun. We just sit back, talk about what's on our mind, and that's it. You know, if we got something positive to say, we say it. If it's negative, it's negative. We're just real people being ourselves. We got a new patron to think. This week, though, it's fine. No, not Svang. Svan. Svan? 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 That is their name. I don't know. Get back to us. You can message us on Patreon (laughs) and, and, I don't know, attach an audio file or just give us a phonetic pronunciation. You know what? We might uh, have the, I might, I'll talk to you about that while we're all (laughs) fair. Ah, yeah, right. (laughs) Not even joking around. Not even joking around. Head over to LineSchemeCast.com. That's where we get everything. We host all the audio for free, commercial free. There's even a video version and uh, extended cut of this for patrons. You get a customized RSS feed. Jordan's got a little wish list if you want to pick him up something. I got one for the studio. Jill's got one. Pedro's got one. A bunch of stuff on there. Yay, shock and jive. We've done the thing. Now we can talk about NVIDIA Pie. Would you even eat that? Is that... I'm trying. I'm trying to see what's inside that. Is that like kiwi or apple? I don't know. It looks. It looks a little too green. I don't know if it's Nvidia. It's probably spite. <laughs> if, if it's Nvidia, it's like you get like the tiniest little slice for like seven hundred dollars. Oh, and then man. if you want like a decent, if you want a scoop of right, ice cream, oh right. boy, you're like no, that's consumer grade. That's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. ice cream requires the 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 Tesla series pie slice. But oh, what's man. the Difference, Jensen, is software. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our driver is the difference. Cooler Pie from Cooler Master. Yeah. I was, I was saying that earlier uh, before we started recording, Cooler Master and open source don't really go hand in hand. One might right, not think. Right together, man. Like peanut butter right, and tarantulas. Like- Exactly. Um, but they have uh, they have a brand new case out. It is the follow up to one of the previous ones that they released the case. Uh, their the their Cooler Master Pi case, um, to which I think we both went. Cooler Master had a pie yeah. Case? <laughs> Apparently, they crowdfunded it again. Not some not typically behavior you would expect out of Cooler Master. It looks but like there a you beeper. Go. It you know what it, Get it off probably my could function. You could probably make it function as a beeper. Children, it, Google beeper. You'll find out what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, pagers, man. Um, but yeah, you. Uh, but it uh, you can get the stencil files as well. They're available on GitHub. Uh, but this uh, this uh, has a, a brand new uh, GPIO door. That's kind of the uh, the new killer feature, and it does have a heatsink embedded into the. Um, or integrated into the case itself. Uh, while this will fit non Pi four dimensions. Uh, the heatsink is not aligned unless it is a Pi four. So uh, mm. yeah, don't 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 try that. So, so yeah, good on you, Cooler Master. I I was literally shocked to read all of this because I kept thinking Cooler Master did this. Really, Cooler Master? They they even did good. If you've been following the show, you know I have a Argon one case for the Raspberry Pi that controls the Stream Deck, not Steam Deck, Stream Deck in the studio, and um, kind of the same idea with Argon one on the lid. You, it's just kind of, you know, a single piece with the aluminium and it comes down and it sits on top of the, uh, SOC. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the SOC package, whatever right. you call it. And, uh, it just goes to flat metal on the top, which guess what? If you want to dissipate heat, I, I, I do my best to obey the laws of thermodynamics in this house. You're going to need some fins to help radiate the heat off. And yeah, uh, you need, you need surface area, right? Like, yeah. They did a good on this. They did a good on this. I mean, there's at least something there. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, the GPIO on the back, I know, I know that machining's not very tight, but I mean, considering this thing's like 20 bucks, like, okay. Yeah. And you can, you can print it yourself, right? Like, yeah, I think uh, you had a lot of experience with Raspberry Pis. Like you don't even want to mess with them anymore. Do you? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I'm full. I, I, these days, I would not say I have a lot of experience with Raspberry Pis. I have a lot of experience with er- the early days of Raspberry Pi. Mm. These da- these days, it is a much different and much improved beast. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I got. I think I have a Pi three upstairs, acting as the uh, as as like a like a TV box for the bedroom. Um, but no, if I, if I had a Pi four, this is this is definitely like a good case. I would probably go with this, yeah, because it, it actually looks like a respectable computer and does a good job of cooling it, supposedly. Kind of they, they also have the they also have a uh, they have a they have a tool for it on GitHub as well the uh, the uh, interface to control the wattage and whatnot. Right, and it's got a nice GUI on it. Mm-hmm. Like if you were using that, you know, as a desktop, and more and more people are because ah man, 
kind of wish the dark times hadn't had us for the past couple of years because I'm, I just got a feel that like when we see the Raspberry Pi 5, whatever the top end kit is for the Raspberry Pi, that is going to be a legitimate desktop. Like, man, yeah, like no compromise, uh, you know, not gaming, obviously, but no, but, but like, yeah, you, you could, you could absolutely like use it, use it as a standard desktop. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think they could probably do it now, but it's, it's always priced, right? Like right. Ra- Ra- Raspberry Pi is committed to the, like, try, trying to keep under the like $35 right, make, make it affordable. Now, so, days, yeah. yeah. For, um, yeah. I saw something very, I posted that in our discord. Um, maybe last week I saw socketed BGA memory chips for the Pi. No, no, just in general. Like, oh, <laughs> this can be done. You know, ball grid array. Traditionally, you know, you're going to have to hit that with a heat gun. And watch it go like hope. But yeah, guys, like, no, here's the memory module. Clicked it in on BGA. I'm like, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's stackable pie. Or oh, just man, being we, able we need- to upgrade the RAM yeah. on something, right? No, now, now, now in my brain, I'm just like imagining like the Sega Tower of Power, but just, like, oh yeah, keep, keep keep stacking them, man. Just oh, keep yeah. stacking them. Man, I don't know. I mean, I have a Raspberry Pi that I have not even... I got the Raspberry Pi Zero, the second one. I had the original one. I got this part two, you know, the ones that are like dual core for a project that I haven't even done yet. No, I, I look forward to cracking that open and playing around with it. All right. Now, if you do keep track of uh, Raspberry Pi's type stuff, just mobile development stuff, you probably know a guy called Jeff. Jeff Gearling. And he likes to punish pies. He does. And I respect that. I understand that. What am I looking at here, Jordan? That doesn't look right. That looks yeah, wrong. Yeah, that, 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 that is a pie with the external GPU. That looks like a testament to the arrogance of mankind. Yeah, this this is some... Je- Jeff Goldblum is uh, looking at this and, and chewing his nails. He's like leaning on it, yeah. having his breathing. Yeah. Sweating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All this, right. this, is really, this is really cool, though. Like, he, uh, Gearling goes through the uh, entire breakdown of what he had to do in order to get this up and running. They tried it with uh, new. With, they tried it with uh, new NVIDIA cards. It didn't work. They tried it with new AMD cards. It didn't work. Does work with old AMD cards. If you got like an R six hundred uh, compatible card, you can use their hack driver, um, which is pretty neat. Um, but appa- apparently, the uh, the the big uh, the big obstacle here is. Uh, any sort of uh, consumer grade PCI on ARM has a busted up root complex, mm. which means that certain memory operations they're just going to eat poo. It's just not going to be very very good. And apparently, newer uh, newer GPUs more are, are more affected by these uh, th- this performance hit than uh, older GPUs, which is why uh, he tests with like a seventy four fifty. I think it was he said. Uh, yeah, just by saying that, that you, you already yeah, know that you're not going to get any type of like. Uh, hardware video acceleration with that. No, no, no. And, uh, and yeah, so the, but like this, this, this is just more of a, can we actually do it? And to, to their credit, they absolutely can. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I, I don't know what, what, what does this, what does this mean for the future? Hopefully it means that like now consumer grade arm can start fixing their, uh, PCIe root complexes. Cause if people are going to want to start doing this stuff, they're going <laughs> to quickly run into that problem. Right. I maybe I mean to me like a lot of the a lot of the promise and a lot of the neatness with the uh, Raspberry Pis and you know single board PCs is having that SOC, not having to worry about memory, not having to worry about a video card, and like working within those limitations. And like, let's see, let's see if we can make Doom Three run on not Doom Three. What was it? Quake Three? Yeah. Um, but X. Does not give it to you at this at all, though. You had to, had to use Wayland, and it was still a little glitchy, but... Yeah, uh, Weston, okay, apparently yeah. Weston has the chuggies, they said. Mm. I don't know. Here's, like, strangely, last week, Blackmagic. I got a bunch of Blackmagic hardware. They released... Uh, I had to go look into this. Like, hey, we have ARM drivers. And like, well, I might be making a video. Uh, <laughs> you, you need one of, the, one of those boards that... Uh, it got shared in Discord a couple months ago, but it was like uh, it was like a 16 core with like it was like a, my, a mini ITX board. Yeah, and it was like call for pricing always. Yeah, <laughs> like the, which is code for you can't afford it. Don't waste uh, our bul- time. Um, yeah, you, uh, bulk orders only, please. Yeah, I did like uh, not that one, but the previous. You know, these show up like once mm-hmm. a year, and uh, usually on CNX software they'll talk about them. 
And I like emailed the company. I'm like, you know what? Let's just see if we can get our hands on one or get a price. And they, like I, me, I wasn't worth their time to even get back to me. Mm. They were like, whatever. But on the Black Magic ARM thing, uh, they did in their um, late S beta drivers have support for ARM, but not Raspberry Pi. They It's like two different versions of the Jetson Nano to which I went right. Those things do exist, don't they? Mm. Which is unfortunate because I'm not going to buy one to <laughs> no, <laughs> plug and like, hey, look, yeah. that's neat. Unplug and toss it in the closet somewhere and never touch it again. I keep wanting to call them Jensen's. But the Jensen's? The yeah, Jetsons. the Jensen's. Because, yeah, come, come on. It's, it's, it's an easy mistake. I don't know, man. Like, I'm not buying one unless I can get a case with, like, uh, the textured leather jacket on it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I we, 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 we can send some uh, mail to Cooler Master. Maybe they can get something. Oh, done. man. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, if you we got a contact segment, you want to do that segment section on the web zone, leave a comment on YouTube, Patreon, wherever text can be input. Maybe it'll find its way to us, but we got to bounce out of here. We have, because we're 31 minutes. We almost nailed it. We almost nailed it. Easy peasy, baby. Oh, man. I do find a little bit of humor that, like the credits, we do in the end, if you're listening on audio, as simple as they are, I have to crack open Fusion and use like 3D modeling software. <laughs> it gets a chuckle out of me how. Yep. Yep. For some dumb text. But we do want to thank everybody. And if you didn't know, there's a video version of the show. Your name is up on the screen right yeah, now. Look at all these people. They're beautiful. Make the show possible. Buy us out, Netflix. (laughs) Cancel us after two seasons. Two seasons. Oh, man. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.